Reason's instruments are MIDI triggered. So let's have a look at the basics of just recording a simple MIDI track. Here we have an empty project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an instrument here. This is the Kong Drum Designer. I'm going to just scroll down a little bit to an empty space. I'm going to pick it up and drop it into the rack, like so. Now I've already got my MIDI controller set up, my keyboard, so if I press some keys on the keyboard it should trigger sounds inside Reason. There you go. I'm going to just choose a different patch, perhaps this one. There we go. And you can see that when I trigger a note, I get MIDI signal appearing down here. This little arrow thing here with the green level light shows me that MIDI is being received. So the first thing I want to do is set the tempo of my project. I can do that by double clicking in here and I'm going to choose 95 BPM and I'm going to enter that on my keyboard. The next thing I want to do is create a loop from the left and right locators here. So I can pick them up and I can just drag them to create a loop like so. You'll notice that because snapping is switched on, these markers snap to bar markers. If for any reason I wanted to change that, I could make it snap to quarter notes, like so. But for looping, you generally want things to stay in bar format because that makes everything much easier to deal with. The next thing I'm going to do is switch the click track on so that I have a guide. Obviously, if you already had a beat or a loop going that was rhythmic and in time, you wouldn't necessarily need to switch this on, but I'm going to do it because this is the first thing I'm doing in this project file. Now, I press record, and when I do that, the playhead is going to start playing and Reason's going to start capturing MIDI to that channel. I'm going to play some MIDI notes and you'll see them appear on the screen as I record. I haven't got looping switched on just yet. If I had looping switched on, then when the playhead reached the right marker, it would flip back to the beginning and start recording again. As it is, I'm just going to leave it to play out. So here we go. Press stop, and there's my MIDI part. And recording MIDI is as simple as that. You can see that it's created a clip that's slightly longer than our loop. I can pick up the end edges of this clip and just move it back and move this one forward so that my clip is nice and clean at the edges and it occupies just the time I wanted it to occupy.